What's it like to have me organize your home? And what's it like to not just unpack the boxes, but the deeper meaning behind them? I'm Dara. I help people live a more minimalist lifestyle so they can focus on what matters most without getting overwhelmed along the way. If you're looking for a simpler life, keep tuning in to videos like this one. In this video, you'll see me talking about challenges that my client is currently facing. Then you'll get a little peek into what it's like when we go through stuff together and the really surprising discovery that we made. Hi, I'm Dara Seikerman, owner of Less Equals More, and I'm here with Carolyn Lee. We're here because Carolyn has been living in her home for how many years at this point? It's just over a year. So just like, over a year. Yeah, so it takes some time to get used to a new place. What are some of the challenges you've been facing as you readjusted to a new home? I figured out that the stuff I had, so, you know, it, some of it fit, but then it's like I still needed to get other stuff to make the whole mm. thing. I felt like I had to get other stuff to make the whole thing work. I did a lot of purging, but I still mm. feel like even a year in I just still have things that I want to get rid of things mm. that I are still hanging on for some reason so yeah I think that's the biggest one and the biggest biggest one is the one I'm going to go over today which is the sentimental clutter that I have mm. yeah so that's the, the toughest one 13 boxes well it makes sense you when you go to a new place you figure out what your needs are what the functionality is what the habits and systems are and so some of the, your old stuff no longer applies and then sometimes you do need to buy a few new things. And even though I'm a proponent of minimalism, I'm also a pro proponent of efficiency and ease in your home. So that makes sense. And then when you have a bigger home, oftentimes all of those items that you have put off dealing with, you have yes. a space to store them. So they're kind of out of sight, out of mind. And it sounds like you're really ready to tackle those items that you actually had fairly organized. You said 13 boxes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great that you have all that together. But as you said, it's it's time to go through some of the emotional attachments that you've developed yeah. to those things. Yeah. To those things. So Caroling and I will be going upstairs and starting to sort through those boxes. So what have we got here? It's a bag of my hair. Oh, okay. I to touch this. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. I've touched much grosser things. You have. Business. Yeah. This is just hair. It's my hair that I had. Wow. I, cut off. That is so creepy. I don't even know what to do. Like, why, part of it's why did you just, save it? I, because at the time my hair was super long mm -hmm. and it's actually kind of, now that I'm looking at it, the texture of it is so different than my hair today. And mm. like, to well, this is a first for me. I've never had to figure out what to do with human hair. But we'll figure it out. Whoa. But I think, are we in agreement that you don't need to keep this? Wow, it's actually a question for me. What yeah. do I need to do with this? You probably kept it for a really long time, maybe? Yes. And so it feels like you've always had it. And yes. there's this sort of default nature to these mementos that we store away and we just, you don't even like think about it. But now you're thinking about it. You have a lock of your own hair. It's been sitting in this bin. And it probably feels weird to think about giving it up. But it also feels weird to be holding it right now. It's really weird to. It's like, it's like hearing your voice when you were a child. Yeah. That's really kind of hard to get rid of that. Yes. I'm gonna have to. I can, I can't. I don't think I can make this decision. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And actually, let's. If we could talk about that for a second. Yeah. Sometimes when we're going through these older mementos that have been stored away, yeah. we haven't seen them in so long that we have to do one or two or sometimes even three passes with them mm. sort of like we we're talking about these books um from your dad who's passed away caroline hadn't looked at them for a, a while she got rid of half of them um i suggested keeping two or three she kept five but that made sense right she hadn't looked at them for a long time they were very serious emotional memento for her they're now going to be displayed so she'll see them more often and I could imagine in some period of time, you'd be ready to get to donate a few of these yes. in the future. And you'll probably always keep a couple, which would be perfectly lovely for you to do. 
So yes, yeah, sometimes with the, the deeper mementos and the ones that we haven't looked at in a long time, it's okay to take a second or a third pass at those. And as long as you're consistent about that and dedicated to the process, it's okay if it takes longer. We have in here. I found an envelope with a dollar. <laughs> a dollar. So with a lot of my clients, we find checks that haven't been deposited and we have to call the bank because it's been past the you know three months. Um, so then we find money. Uh, I guess in this case, we found $1. So, so far we paid $1. Yes. Um, and sometimes what you end up finding, of course, in going through things are items that can be resold and that's money too. So always remember that your stuff and actual cash money itself um, can be sitting in some of your boxes. For more information about minimalism and how to make your life easier, keep tuning in and subscribe so you can see more videos like this one.